time to strap in and get ready. The leaders in NRL Supercoach are incoming. Bringing you the ultimate insight to help you win your leagues and climb up the rankings. You're now listening to the Insight NRL Show with your hosts, Brain, Matrix, and Whisperer. Hello and welcome back to the Inside NRL Show. It's TLT for round six. Uh, the show is brought to you by the Standard Squeeze and Ryan from Astute Newstead. I'm the Supercoach Matrix, and I'm here to talk through team lists, trades, captains, and tons more. Mate, we've got the Whisperer here. Firstly, thanks for covering while I was away on a little Larry Emder. Um, but how'd you fare in the carnage that was TLT today? Somehow this is not my podcast. So I, I agreed in the preseason to be uh, a guest, but I've covered for you, and I've also now covered for Brain, who is mysteriously sick after having <laughs> yeah. a, a shocking week. Surprise, surprise. But uh, absolutely horrendous, mate. My team is in <laughs> shame. My, my, everything's, everything's screwed. Like I, I am just so far up shit creek. Even if I boost this week, I'm getting 16 people, and that's including Satili coming off the bench for a whopping... 18 points. So I am fucked. I am in all sorts of pain. Mike Acevo dropped. Zach Labart out for the season. Delonghi dropped. Uh, Sammy Fainu stood down like with the HIA. I'm just, I'm just absolutely bent over at the moment. It's not fun. <laughs> yeah, no, it was a, uh, it was a rough day out there in Supercoach. But yeah, surely there's something else going well. How's your, how's your AFL? Uh, much better. Ranked uh, ranked about five hundred out of two hundred thousand. So, uh, much better in AFL and much better in AFL in in NRL fantasy too. But no one's here to talk about that, unfortunately. As much as I'd love to uh, to do that, I was just I was just trying to find some positiveness. You sound a bit <laughs> negative there, man. So, um, look, drop your questions below. Uh, we can't answer them all, but we'll answer all the best ones. So make them good. Um, subscribe, like, follow, and review uh, here on YouTube, Spotify, or wherever you consume our podcast. Um, I might start with how I went. Um, 1,099, which has me up a couple spots. I was about 5,800, so I'm in there to, I think, 5,500. Um, brought in SJ over Val. Uh, brought in Talungi last week. Copped a little AE in 5.8. Um, swerved last minute. I had Val coming in to captain him and, um, yeah, ended up looping Ponga. So decided to go SJ instead. Um, outside of that, three nice little hundreds from Turbo, Ponga, and, of course, my new recruit in SJ. Mate, how'd you go? Yep. Uh, opted to trade out Turbo instead of Latrell. I was like, look, Latrell's got the better draw. Turbo takes on the Panthers. Um, we're gonna trade one of them out, but we'll trade trail. We'll trade turbo and keep trail. Uh, and then turbo scored 100 and trail got su- suspended for three weeks. Um, goodness me, let me pull up my team. I can talk you through the bad Zach Labutt scoring 47 after about 15 minutes was looking amazing. ACL, Taylor May did nothing. Uh, had to play like I was, was, I was copying an AE anyway. Um, and Sammy Fonu got 12, so that was him as my AE getting the HIA. Uh, my one of my best performers in Mike Acevo scored a double and got dropped. Uh, it feels like yeah. real, real Jason Gillespie scoring two hundred against Bangladesh to get dropped from the Australian cricket team uh, type vibes. I mean, Ethan Strange was really cool. He got a ninety six. That was about the highlight of my week. And then Sean Lane sucking. Uh, Liam Henry, as I'm sure many in this uh, chat know, he is or was my front row forward too. Uh, he copped a minus one. So a lot of people had him on their bench. And he didn't become an AE because he was in the minus. So minuses don't count for AEs. But he was in my starting team. So he counted. And uh, and Terrell May with a 21. I was talking to Brino in the wrap-up, mate. And I was saying on Friday night, it was my my better half's uh, birthday. So we were at a dinner. And like a degenerate that I am, I had one AirPod in. And my phone set up at the dining table when we were at a dinner watching. And I watched Tedesco get the HIA and I watched Dominic Young get sent off. And I never cheer for injuries, but I was like, fuck, this is the week. It turns around. All the players are highly owned. They they get low scores. This is it for me. I'm going to turn it around. Uh, and then it just, it was a disaster. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> shit show. Uh, bought in Pappenhausen for his 50. So just all around great times. And now I'm looking at my team and I have uh, 13, 13 players that have been named. And that includes Satili off the bench. So 
Yeah, even if we boost, we we can't field a full squad. So this is going to be absolutely uh, horrendous this week for me. It's getting worse and worse. You know how they say uh, it, it, it's only up from here. It's that's it's just it's still going down. I'm wondering when we bottom out. <laughs> um, I mean, like you you're gonna have some steps in the right direction. I reckon Pappy's a really good play this week, even though um even though he didn't have his good play. He needs to score. Week. He needs to break Cleary's record <laughs> for me to have a serviceable week. But yes, get your questions in. I am on question duty tonight, so I'll be highlighting the ones that we'll highlight at the end of the show. Um, but mate, you're you're flying the flag in the NRL department. I'm flying the flag in the AFL department for this show. Uh, but apart from that, not much else to talk about on my end. <laughs> <laughs> Look, um, you know what? You've you've heard how we're going. So join our unlimited league. Take on us. Um, at times it wouldn't be hard. You're not um, taking on this. <laughs> Triple seven one four one uh for a super coach champions wing ring. Um and we're also giving away prizes every week. Um so go to supercoachchampion.com to get your league a championship ring. Um let's roll into our squeeze of the week. Of course, it is brought to you by the standard squeeze. Um if you're sick of breaking glass bottles, your beer goes warm or your coffee gets cold. The standard squeeze have everything you need to drink responsibly but also conveniently. Um, the standard squeeze products are made from food grade quality plastic so that you can measure the perfect pour in case you need to drive. You know how much you've had. Um, you can go to the website, thestandardsqueeze.com and use code INSIGHT15 to get yourself 15% off. And I believe I owe Hamo this from last week. So, While you're sculling that one there, mate, there's a, a couple of things. Agent Cheese, resident uh, contributor, wants to know, it's been a long time since you've been this positive, and for good reason. And then that follows into um, Sleezer's question. What did you actually score last week, and, and where are you ranked? Because you are the best of the three of us. Uh, my yeah. rank is abysmal. It's available on my Instagram, at SC Whisperer. Give myself a plug. Go check it out. But, Matrix, where did you actually finish up with rank-wise? It's 1,099, um, and then I finished. I'll get it exactly. Um, apologies. We're not ducking from putting our scores up. Uh, Braino just chat. usually does I that put for in us. The chat that Braino normally says. We're not ducking from If anyone actually cares about mine at the moment, uh, it's abysmal. It is uh, 68K, and it's going to be even lower this week because I don't have a full team. Um, what is yours, Matrix? 5,639 so. Mine's mine's also 68k with uh, only going to have one boost remaining after this week as well. So fucking, woo! I'm wondering, like, if I'm not going to field a full team, yeah. I'm wondering if I just don't boost. I'm going to cop a, I'm, I'm going to cop a shit score anyway. It's like, do I just save the boost or do I just try and fix the fucking shit show that my team is? Uh, but we'll, we'll we'll get to that. Uh, yeah, shout out to James. It'll be better in two weeks. James said I'll be better in two weeks' time. Uh, I said that after round one, and we're now in round six, and it hasn't gotten. <laughs> Oh, no, it's hard. Like if you're a head to head player and you're in your position, you would go and tank this week and start looking yeah, forward to the next lost. week. So yeah, may- maybe something like that. Um, but our squeeze of the week, um, our top scorer for round five was Callum, coach of the Gets Gone Gurus with a 1426. Callum looped Ponga and didn't have a score below 60 in his whole forward pack. Put that That's into good. perspective. Um, so well done to you, mate. Slide into our DMs and we will get you a four in one or a squeeze pack from our friends here at the Standard Squeeze. Um, our overall leader is Rowan, coach of the Cotton Pickers, who is 72nd overall. Very um, questionable username there, Rowan. Very questionable. <laughs> um, shout out to Oman, who's in our chat. Uh, obviously, yeah, go check him out. Amazing stuff, but yeah, rip to my reserves. I've got none, so we are we are screwed. Um yeah, cool. Take us through the world, the World Cup, mate. Tell us a little bit. It's your your brainchild, and um and we've got the um some of the leaderboards there. You're doing better we in do. that than me, I reckon. Oh, uh, mate, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm being absolutely tanked. Uh, Super Coach World Cup. You guys are long time followers. You know exactly what it is. Uh, it's the pinnacle of of all Super Coach. What we believe, uh, a competition of all four major sports: NRL, AFL, BBL, and NBL. Things are heating up in the NRL. Things are heating up in the AFL. And obviously, preparation for the other two sports will come. We've got uh, basically the way it works is all four of your collective scores will be, uh, you know, accumulated together, and um, we will be able to crown a winner probably in February next year. So it's a it's a very long season, and uh, there's still time to enter. If you would like to get around it, please message myself, Matrix Braino, or the actual Insight page itself. But yes, rankings are taking shape, and it just goes to show you know, if you if you're not doing great in one and doing you know, okay, and the others, you can definitely uh, shoot up the rankings. But Brent, 
FM1717 is currently leading with a combined rank of 4.32%. And that's probably made up, I think Brent's doing okay in AFL and okay in NRL. So it's not like he's killing both of them. Um, and yeah, so he is currently leading. Um, the leader of the NRL is David van der Geisen. I've butchered that, David. I'm so sorry. But last he's year's NBL the winner, winner of the NBL Supercoach, actually. Yes. So um, yeah, he can storm home then. So he is leading the NRL. Um, the AFL is still led by yours truly, uh, somehow holding up an abysmal rank, but ranked 517th in AFL. I don't know what David is off the top of my head in NRL, but I assume he is flying. Uh, I think it's about 1,200th. So your ranks don't need to be that good to to you know be in, in the mix. 4.32% uh, is currently leading. So get around it. Uh, really excited to see it progress as the season goes on. And just want to highlight this super chat from Michael Finch. Uh any super chats that come in, we will read them out as priority because it's just the, the done thing to do. But any other questions, I'll pin them to the end. Uh, Michael, has Pappenhausen and Turbo as fullbacks? Is it worth trading for Walsh? Now, Walshy, I'm really tempted by Walshy just because I'm going to probably start throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. His break even is the second highest in the game, but boy, he has a great draw matrix and he is goal kicking. I still would be waiting a week. But he could cover that. And again, it depends your position. Like if you really need to get saucy with it and risky with it, then um, who are you trading out? I know that you're in a similar position. I don't have Pappenhausen and I'm scared of not owning him this week. I own Turbo and I'm not even tempted in the slightest to trade Turbo out. Uh, would you trade Pappenhausen for Walsh or, or a Turbo for Walsh? No, because... Pappenhausen, like we said this all preseason, like the draw starts to open up now. Like this is the time to be getting on him, taking on a Bulldog side that's absolutely depleted. But Turbo's got the Titans next week. So it's just, it's, I wouldn't be selling either for, for Walsh. He's got a massive break even. Uh, I don't think it's worth the trade. I don't think he outscores either of those two by enough to warrant the trade. Uh, and he's also going to have to score a lot to cover his break even, which I think is 137. So in your position, mate, I definitely wouldn't be. Um, it's more a question if you're a Latrell owner that's where it opens up because you're sort of forced to make that trade a bit there. But that answers that super chat. And let's get into the regular proceedings of the show. Yeah. Um, let me just give me a second. I'm a bit steady. Uh, let's head into some injuries. A shit show between you and I tonight. I haven't produced a podcast in probably nine months. And I know Braino normally does it when you and him are on. So it's going to be testing times for both of us. Um, yeah, it's all good. I, I do usually do the NBL one, so uh, I just got to find where Brano's got all the buttons. But um, yeah, let's let's head into some of the injuries. Um, look, I'll go through some of the cat ones, uh, HIA. So, so you've got Teddy, you've got Blake Taff, you've got Ruben Garrick, you've got Liam Henry, and you've got Samuela Fino. Um, sorry for rattling off most of your team there, uh, Whisperer. <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh, but yeah, we could just read up my my game day from last week and that would cover most of them. Um, you've got Sam Walker that's picked up a cat too. Um, you've got John Bateman that's out. You've got Adam Reynolds with that hamstring strain. Dean Mariner out with a back fracture. Uh, Joe Chan, uh, he had that infected hand. Looks like he's just been dropped now back for Sean Bloor. Uh, Max King had a hand fracture, but he's been named. Kurt Mann with a wrist fracture. Connor Tracy's name, but has a calf strain. Uh, Gus Gould did a huge bulldog wrap up over on Twitter. Breno and I tried to find that on Sunday. But Gus tweets more than me, and that says a lot because I tweet a lot. Um, Harrison Edwards out with that neck, as we saw on the weekend. Kick out with a lower leg contusion. Tyson Frizzell still has that hamstring strain. No word on the severity of it, but it doesn't sound great. DWZ picked up a hamstring strain, but has been named. Murata Niakore is going to be out for a while. Uh, Lockie Ilias, this one was grim. The footage oh. of this it didn't look good, and he's out for a long, long time. I feel a bit harsh for Lusick. I don't think he did anything wrong but he's been suspended for quite a while i think it's just a result of the, the injury unfortunately yep abby farnworth ac joint tom flegler ac joint uh both of those uh herbie hasn't been named but flegler has uh and felice kafusi and latu fainu both out with hamstring strain so very quick injury wrap up but obviously the, the most important ones there so let's go out with that cat one um not an injury but dom young suspended for three weeks latrell mitchell suspended for three weeks Ruben Garrick, uh, obviously, is going to miss this week. Liam Henry was was missing this week anyway. Uh, and then, yeah, you've got a couple of other super coach related names. Joe Chan, who's been dropped, is probably the most uh, common one there, which sucks for owners. I um, you you mentioned before with your with your team, like just throwing shit at the wall and seeing if it sticks. 
I feel like Souths would probably do that with a Lachlan Ilias had he been healthy. Like, you know, yeah. like he was dropped and like he obviously wasn't the problem there or any of the problems. I'm not sure. No, yeah, I guess when you, when you lose, you know, what was it, three in a row, you've got to make some kind of changes and you're never dropping Trell and you're never dropping Cody. So it's like, unfortunately, it's for Ilias. Yeah, and yeah, I'd be, he's not playing again this year. So, uh, yeah, no, he is. He is. Oh, what, Trell or? I mean, um, lucky Elias, yeah. I was like, fuck it, oh, you got some inside scoop on Trell. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's, ha- let's head into the weekly preview brought to you by Ryan from Astute News. Matrix, you're a homeowner, uh, so you know all about this. But if your rates are higher than 6.2%, or if you're looking to buy a home, maybe you're wanting to refinance or renovate, or maybe you just want to save some money like the rest of us. I am a massive tight ass, so I would love to save some coin. Uh, then reach out to Ryan from Astute News instead for an obligation and cost-free inquiry. Uh, his link tree will be in the description of this video. Uh, and use code INSIGHT. I know that uh, Braino and Matrix have both used them. Unfortunately, I am still a child. I am not in a position to buy a house. But when the time comes, Ryan will be there. He's in my DMs always asking for super coach advice, so it's only fair. I go to him for financial advice with my rates. <laughs> yes, yes, 100%. So um, I think I've stuffed up somewhere along the way, but let's um, let's go into the buys this week. Oh, okay. No, we can, we can, no, we can do that. We can, I, I'll just scroll down. We can go to the game previews. That's fine. And we can yeah, let's, let's go to the game previews. Um, Knights versus Roosters. Any chance you can get down there this week? Uh, nah, mate. <laughs> I've got no interest. I can go. Uh, if you if you want me to put that pong curse on, um, but uh, no, I, I haven't I haven't got plans on going. Uh, maybe if uh, if the weekend is uh, ever so kind, it's a Thursday games are always odd because the traffic in like if anyone's been the Newcastle stadiums kind of situated in the suburbs, so it's very difficult to get to at times. But for the Knights, no changes for them. They got the win last week, but Greg Marge was on the reserves, which is promising for him. Obviously, was out with that hand surgery. A couple of weeks ago, you'd think Tom Jenkins makes way for him. Uh, but for the Chooks, mate, there is a lot going on here. Teddy and uh, Sam Walker both out. Manu at fullback, Connor Watson at 5'8". Tatili Tupanua is back to the bench. Nat Butcher is back in the squad. There was a little bit of concern over him on social media, but his gorgeous partner gave birth to their first child. So congratulations to the Butcher household. And he was relieved of playing, which is understandable. But he's back in. And big Gus Crichton is starting as well with Satili on the bench. So I'm sure he's a popular target this week as well. And Junior Powaga replaces the suspended Dom Young with Michael Jennings in the centers. It feels like 2016 when I'm saying Michael Jennings in the centers, but he's back. And there's obviously he's in the headlines this this week. I think Powaga was about 10 in 2016. So um, yeah, that's, that's, that's delightful. Um, yeah, look, I, it's hard. To make, I wish that they'd come out for a bit more with Teddy because I think Manu could be a massive target. But I mean, yeah. he, the history's there of of injury, like of HIAs. Like this is his tenth, I think. Yeah, something like that. Something ridiculous. And the problem with HIAs is, I was talking to Brano about this on Sunday. It's just like it's not like a broken leg where it's like, cool, you'll be back in eight weeks. It's like it could be a week, it could be twelve. Could be the season, like who knows? Um, the talk is that he's tracking well and he should be back next week. So I just think there's too much concern. Like Manu is not a keeper when he's playing center. Um, so I don't want to be trading someone in for two weeks who's not a keeper. And the Roosters don't exactly have the greatest matchups in the world. So I'd probably let Manu go through to the keeper if that's just me. Yeah, no, 100%. But if he finds himself four weeks there, six weeks there, like, Always a popular oh, yeah. target through the origin period, but yeah, it does make it a bit hard this week. Um, and look, Connor Watson, I think I'll wait a week to see, but um, good to see him starting playing footy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, uh, Manu's break even is is thirty nine, so he'll, he'll surpass that. But like, even if he goes at hundred, he's still going to be about seven hundred and fifty k next week. So he's not going to be out of this world. And you'll get some more info on him. There was some chat about Terrell May uh, and some concern over him. I've Got none. Uh, the Roosters just ran with one middle last week and just tried to stack the edges. So, um, yeah, I've got no real concern over of, over his minutes uh, moving forward. Uh, Storm taking on the Doggies. Amy Park, 6 o'clock on a Friday. Good place to be, hopefully. Uh, good crowd there Unless as well. Unless you're a Bulldog. Unless you're a Bulldog, exactly. Uh, Jack Howarth dropped Joe Chan in the extendeds um, for the Storm, but they remain pretty much unchanged. 
Uh, Stephen Crichton got moved to fullback, Connor Tracy named despite that calf strain. Uh, Jaden Salmon at 13, Josh Curran named in the second row as he was last week, but moved to the bench on game day. Uh, popular cheapie, Palasa Farmasuli on the bench uh, with debutant Bailey Howard there as well. And Sam Hughes is back to the bench uh, as well with Chris Patolo starting. As we saw last week, we prefer Hughes uh, on the bench. And unfortunately, he is probably going to be my front and forward number two this week, which is fucking dire. Mate, he could pull something out. Like, I was surprised with just, last just week. But, um... Wayne, this feels like a low blow. Reminder to do the opposite of what Whisperer says. I, I think, no, I think I've, I've given out good advice. It's just a case of do as I say, not as I do, because what I've done isn't great, but I think I've said some all right things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you weren't telling everybody you get Mike Acevo. You were saying, I'm getting Mike Acevo. I'm doing it. Please, I, I don't want the responsibility of him getting dropped by Brad Arthur despite scoring 100% of their points last week. Broad. Yeah, 100%, man. Um, not too much to tackle there. We've got an 8 p.m. game, the Battle of Brisbane. Um, Stace is asking if I'm heading to this one. Look, I'm a chance. I do share the tickets with my uh, my brother and my sister-in-law, and I went to the last game against the Bunnies. So, um. Yeah, I've uh, I'm second in queue for those. Um, but star fullback Reese Walsh being named. Um, look, could there be a better matchup for Reese Walsh to come back into? Dolphins leak points. Like this could, at risk of sounding corny, and it does sound corny. This could be anything. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, Caelan Ponga is eight hundred and sixty k, and Reese Walsh. I think Walshy is seven fifty. Hang on. Yep. Just searching in my... Yeah, so he's 750. Do you think Kalen Ponga is 13 points better than Reese Walsh between now and Origin? Probably not. Um, especially if Walsh is going to be goal-kicking for the next two to three weeks. Like, I'm... If I was looking at Walsh or Ponga and money was tight, I'd probably side Walsh, just knowing that we're going to lose some cash over the probably next two weeks. But, yeah, uh, the draw opens up amazing for the Broncos after this game. Like, it's six, seven, eight, nine are amazing games for the Broncos. So, Walsh, could be a great pod play. Yeah, and... Look, you can't wait a week with that really high break even. Um, but you can also hit it. So it's one thirty. Yeah, 30. <laughs> yeah. Especially exactly. Kicking. Like we know Walsh can go for a hundred just on the best of days. And if he's adding goal kicking, there's probably another twenty points. So there's a real chance that he, that he hits this as well. So I wouldn't be put off by it if we're, if you're looking at Reese Walsh. Um and nobody has the trades with all that carnage that's been going on either. Like it's Oh, unless like unless that. you have Latrell. Like if you own Latrell. Um, that's the only fullback trade I'd be looking at making. Uh, I'll tell you what, wheels up to any forward because you've got Tristan Saylor on the bench, which is great because I think Tyson oh. Smoothie's been named on the bench as well. So you're running yes. your utility end of, end of nine. So two forward bench, which is amazing for guys like Xavier Willison, guys like Corey Jensen and Fletcher Baker if you own them as well. Yeah, no, that's, that's fantastic. I reckon with the two forward bench, look, I think they're trying it. Like Tristan Saylor, they've just said, look, it's he's he went too well to drop him to reserve grade. Yeah, yeah. If it does, I wonder if this wasn't against the Dolphins or if this was a, a tighter game, uh, whether they would not have yeah. taken that risk. But look, Jock Madden's in at halfback for A Ray, not really super coach relevant. Um, Corey Oates on the wing. You're the resident Broncos fan here. Steve has just put, do we know that Staggs isn't kicking? I assume oh, Walsh I, is every second. every time Reese Walsh has been out there with Stags, um, Reese Walsh has grabbed the kicking tee. Yeah, um, I, I, I would imagine I'd, Walsh. Is. Yeah, and I rate Stags as a kicker. I don't really know how he's lost it, but um, yeah, look, Reese Walsh. Um, I would presume he's picking it up. Um, Corey Oates on the wing. Yeah, he he features it. I bet later on today. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I've got no interest, but but shout out to him. Um, Big cock Jock. Jock Madden named at halfback as well. There was some weird talk on Twitter about Mam and Sailor in the halves. I just I didn't buy that. I, I know some Bron- your Broncos fans are wild. They suggest some weird things. Uh, the only suggestion I reckon the last couple games I haven't been super impressed with Jock. Oh, I just wondered if there was any move, it'd be Billy back to five eighth and then yeah. like maybe yeah. a Corey Pakes or or blooding Moser in a game like this over over that, but look, they brought Jock Madden in in case A-Ray got injured. A-Ray's injured, Jock Madden starts. Like, I wish I wish I was on Twitter in like 2018, 2019 when you guys sucked because that would have been some some fun reading because Broncos <laughs> fans are wild. Uh, Xavier Wilson back with a two-forward bench, as we said, wheels up to him. I think he's a great buy this week. He's on the bubble as well, so now's the time to jump on. 
Uh, for the Dolphins, Tessie New replaces the injured Herbie Farnworth and Jared Wallace comes back in as well. Uh, and uh, Anthony Milford on the bench with Kenny Bromwich starting. Not a huge amount there. Probably the most relevant news is Tom Flegler is starting with that AC joint injury. As we know from education from the NRL physio, AC joints don't affect performance. They're just a pain tolerance thing. So I expect him to be in a lot of pain for this game and it would require uh, yeah, some kind of injections to to kill that pain. Do, do we have a timeline on um, on Herbie Farnworth? It looked bad. Oof. Yeah, it didn't look great. Uh, I think the Fizz put up something. If you want to preview the next game, I will, in the background, yep. grab a timeline on Herbie. Yeah, let's head over to Auckland for 3 p.m. Saturday. Uh, Warriors versus the Sea Eagles. Can I say how good it is that daylight savings over? So I'm not saying the times <laughs> twice. Um, <laughs> and like even when I'm when I'm messaging messaging the guys about picking a time, it means what I say. Um, but Warriors versus the Sea Eagles in Auckland. Um, DW Z and Capewell are back after a week off. Um, DW Z hurt himself in the warm up. I think uh, RTS is named on the wing. Um, Burbo named in the centers and Corey Riddell startling, starting in a reshuffle to replace Garrick. Um, yes. Uh, so quickly, uh, Ryan Hammond, friend of the show, asks, is, is a psycho buy without Herbie? Uh, probably not, but ties into the next point. Uh, via the NRL physio, uh, Dolphins expect Herbie Farnworth to miss the next four weeks after scans confirmed a grade three AC joint. No surgery required, shoulder left as is, with plenty of NRL players dealing with the same. Return to play often with painkillers and injections slash padding. But looking like a month out for Herbie, which is not ideal. Uh, I just don't have any faith in the Dolphins with their, I think they have a pretty crappy draw. or well, not uh, like a mediocre draw coming up. So I've got no interest. Yeah, and never had a great draw. But every time I've ever said I've got no interest in Jermaine Asako, like most of last year, um, it went poorly. So if, if you've got a gut feel on Jermaine Asako, get him in. Yeah, uh, gut feel as well. Um, shout out to the big horse who is in the chat, uh, our resident uh, AFL expert over on the Insight channel. So go check out those guys. Um, yeah, so we are up to the Warriors and Seagulls. Yeah, you've na- named everyone. Burbo in the centers, I'm indifferent. Like, you'll play 80, which is great. He's not going to get hooked at halftime for Corey Waddell, but that base is going to be lower. Playing on the right-hand side, you're not playing on the favored left. It's... Yeah, I don't know. I've got no That's, like. I, centers his natural position, but I've just got no faith in him. I heard you and Braino talk about it in the chat, and I'd wondered whether, and I would do the same thing if, like, you guys not having Burbo made you like try to find why it's not good in the centers. And I'm just like, he's a chance of scoring a try, probably yeah. better in the centers. So I don't know. I'm. I didn't go in expecting – I probably expected more after I saw that first 70. Um, but I didn't go in expecting that much from Burbo. And, um, yeah, look, I'm pretty happy. I don't know if I'll play him this week. But, um, yeah, look, uh, with a break even of 12, um, yeah, look, we've been talking about Burbo as somebody you want to get out of your teams. Um, at least this week, let's just see what happens. Yeah, I mean, if you've got him, definitely hold. Um, I sold him two weeks ago because I thought he – peaked and then he scored that 48 in the weekend which really you know regenerated that regenerated that cash making for him he's already made your 41k uh with a break even of 12 even if he comes out and scores a 30 you're gonna make another 15k on him as well so if you've got him fine hold um but yeah i've got no interest in picking him up but the eels cowboys at combank 5 30 on saturday there's a lot of changes going on at Parramatta here despite brad arthur coming out in a press conference saying that he was happy with the way they performed uh there's been a lot of changes mike acevo dropped uh, the man of my heart, my pod, who was doing really well, like from a super coach standpoint, he was going great, uh, averaged 63.5 in his two games, had scored three tries, could have been five, was really happy with him as a, as a buy. Uh, and then he's been dropped, uh, which is not great. We remember Greg and Blaze Talungi also dropped. Blaze Talungi is a weird one. There was some reports getting around from the Daily Telegraph today that he would slide to center with RC playing six, but Brad Arthur has opted for Morgan Harper. Um, I'm not selling. I'm not, I've got no reason to sell. I'm just going to hold him. He's made a 70K. He can still make us more. I'm just going to hold and see how this one plays out. Um, Morgan Harper is in for Sebo, as we've already said, with Ma, uh, Bailey Simonson pushing him to the wing. Dejan Arce, the mustard, playing at six. The Cardi Party is back after a week or so off. Tom Chester replaces the injured Zach Labutt, who is out for the season. But yeah, a lot to unpack with Parramatta. They've changed the six and seven. Uh, they've had three combinations of six and seven in 
three weeks. Uh, Mike Acevo has been dropped after he came back in after being suspended. And uh, yeah, I just, Parramatta's a weird one. Like I don't know where to go with Parramatta because they have an absolute gun side on paper, but it just shows you how important Mitch Moses is to this team. Yeah, I think like even when Mitch Moses isn't scoring well, and we're looking at it from a super coach perspective, but if he's not scoring well in super coach, he just organizes everyone and and you know, uh, Dylan Brown isn't able to play his natural game at the moment either, um, which is hurting owners. It's hurting us. We all we all had um had deal bags at one stage, but I always thought Dejan Arcee, and look, I'm not so did I. I was very surprised to New South Wales Cup. Like, I was surprised to see Blaze get named a couple of weeks ago. I thought it was Arcee and we all got sucked in. So <laughs> Yeah, hundred percent. Um I like I like his game. Um let's see what happens. I could really see him getting this spot. I don't really know what Talagi's done, like especially in the centers that's worth getting dropped for. Oh, hundred percent. Like it's it feels so fucking shit from Brad Arthur to bring in this kid and then drop him when his seven is underperforming. And apart from if your name is not Jermaine Hopgood, like you should fucking hang your head. Pretty much everyone should hang their head in this team that's not named Jermaine Sarko. Like I own him, but what the fuck has Joey Lussie done to Holy Spot? Like, what is does Brennan Hands just like hate Brad Arthur? Like, do, like I don't understand Brad Arthur. Like, he is the new Ricky Stewart. Like, he just is. So, uh, Parramatta fans, I had you pegged at top four. Fuck, you'd be bottom four at this stage. So, I don't know. Hopefully, it turns around because, or maybe it doesn't. Hopefully, they get pumped and then see if it comes back in next week because, fuck, I need it. <laughs> I'm so pissed because, like, it's not like a pod play that went bad. Like it was a pod yeah. play that like was going well. Like he's averaging mid sixties uh, in two games, but yeah, his defense is just piss poor. I actually like we know that his defense is poor, but I didn't actually ever think he was at risk of being dropped. Like oh. Mike Asimo for me is like the guy that power managers pick regardless. Yeah, I just thought like it's apart from defense, definitely in attack. Like. The Eels need points too. They don't just yeah. need some defensive stopper out there. They need everything at the moment. Uh, Matt Timoko, he's uh, he's killed Mike Acevo for me. Uh, moving on to the next game. Oh, yeah, we should probably mention the, the Cowboys. Tom Chester comes in. I actually have not looked at Tom Chester at all. I don't know what he's priced at. I imagine he's priced pretty high because he went well last year. But he is fullback only at 353k. Any love? I mean, fullback. Nah, fullback, fullback only. Full, Maybe fullback, fullback only, but we'll get Jewel in round 12, which is a long time away. But are the, are the fullbacks performing enough for you to 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 skip him? Like, is there two better yeah. fullbacks elite? There's two better. Like, honestly, I look at my fullbacks every week and I'm like, who am I going to captain this week? Is it you yeah. or you? Like, and I feel like I feel the same way about two other guys that I don't have at fullback as well. Uh, the only reason Tom Chester becomes super coach relevant is if you're playing draft and you've got like a Latrell or somebody like that and you need someone for three weeks, uh, Tom Chester's your guy. Or if you're one of those fucking freaks in draft that have a, a flex spot, absolute psychopaths. Oh. I'm looking at him in fantasy. He's 350K in fantasy wing fullback. Maybe maybe might take a punt in yeah. fantasy because that's where I like doing my dirty work. But no interest from me for Tom Chester either. Uh, but Zach Labart is another one. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, it's just brutal. Like he he sucked for two weeks when I brought him in, but he finally came good and then just died. So whatever. Uh Bunny's taking on the Sharks at a core stadium at 735 on Saturday. As we know, Latrell Mitchell has been suspended for three weeks. Um, so he'll miss this week the bye and then two weeks after that. And Jai Gray coming in at fullback. We saw a lot of Jai Gray during the trials. Uh looks really good. So um interesting to see if he absolutely brains it. Does Demetrio, if he still has a job? move Troll to the centers when he comes back. I know that's been floated around. Um, and then maybe playing someone like a Jack White and, and Cody Walker at six and seven. That could work. I mean, it can't be any worse than what they're doing now. So who knows? I'll tell you what, Jack White must feel like a fucking moron. <laughs> he left the Raiders because they sucked to try and win a premiership at Souths and he might win a wooden spoon. Yeah, he might. Um, He might make a few phone calls, I reckon. Uh, like, honestly, like the poor guys done it uh he's been playing well too um but yeah i mean if he wants to sit in the center fine but he might find himself in the halves again i don't know i'd, I'd go play for south if i was getting paid millions and just get to live in redfern like it's or marubra like it's a 
a nice spot to live in. Um, Ty Munro is back as well after missing pretty much all the preseason and the opening rounds with that uh, collarbone injury. But the big news, Damien Cook, 18th man with Pete Mamazoulias, uh, the new hooker for South Sydney. What's going on? Like, what is doing? I mean, I haven't seen Damien Cook be bad enough for me to say, hey, that guy should no, be No, he off. is not the like, issue. Like, he has been great, no. but he's not the fucking problem. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Um, again, grabbing that shit, throwing it at the wall, seeing what sticks. Um, Damien Cook has been dropped for Saliva Havili and Pete Mamazul. <laughs> and, and we've only had five rounds. If I was trying to save my job, Damien Cook would be my number nine in South Sydney right <laughs> yes, now. If my, if my boss said to me, hello, Josh, you have one week to prove to me that you need this job, I wouldn't drop my New South Wales hooker uh, and a very important member of my spine. I don't care how bad he's been. Like I'm not I'm not putting my faith and my job in the hands of Pete Mamazoulis. No offense to Pete, but like... Yeah, friend and fan of the show. Yeah, huge fan. Like, but what is what is doing? Like, unless unless Demetrio knows he's getting sacked, and he's just said, "Let's just blow this shit up, baby. Let's just see what happens." Yeah. I mean, maybe. Ugh. Anyway, um, South Sydney. Honestly, fire. dicks out for you if you own Damien Cook at the moment because oh, uh, this is a week where you need him. I tell you what, I'd love for him to get, you know, promoted to the bench and play twenty minutes, and then I look at buying him. Sometime soon. He's six hundred. When the new coach? Yeah, with the new coach. Um, bring back Seabold. I think he, no, not Seabold. He was good under. No, he was good under Seabold. Bring back Seabold. Yeah, yeah. Bring uh, him back. He's still like he's still going okay. He's still averaging fifty eight point eight. So it's not like he's not sucking. But yeah, I don't know. Um, Kepi and Tellus Duncan. Um, also so, got dropped. Sorry. So, Cade, Cade, Cade Burgess, this is on Cook, um, was listening to NRL 360, and apparently he's missed quite a few tackles and lacking speed. Age, question mark. I think he's lacking speed because he's forward packs fucking Saliva Havili and Michael Cheekham. Like, yeah. Like, no one's going to get speed off the back of that. The average play of the ball speed is terrible. Cam Murray is just trying to fucking do everything because what are they going to do? Give it to Jacob Host? Like, the forward pack's just a dumpster fire. Like, Cook's not been great, but he hasn't been terrible either. Yep. No, I'm with you there. Um, Havili and Moali are in the 17, but was Kepi... Or, I've, I've been impressed every time I've seen Talis Duncan play. Um, Kepi is, I suppose, as good as all those other forwards that you um, that you mentioned as well. Um, I honestly cannot make sense of any of this, except for Jai Gray, really. No, apart from Jai Gray, no. I got, I got no idea what the fuck's happening. Like, But then again, like, is this just the best forward pack they can pick? Because it's just like... Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, uh, for the Sharks, Kyle Eero survives with Talakai named to the bench. Maybe Craig Fitzgibbon seeing some some light at the end of the tunnel. Also, they still have no forwards, so maybe he's just like, yep. "Fuck, we need we need to get Talakai in the middle somehow and moving him to the bench is the best way." But Eero played good enough to to um, yeah, hold his spot. Uh, and Britton Nicola are back from his suspension. I saw a question above uh, saying we're sleeping on Nicola as a pod. Now, from memory, this bench is absolutely shocking for back rowers. I, I, I think Nicola probably plays eighty, but you're not confident in buying him with the bench they've got. They have named Billy Burns and Jack Williams and Sifa Talakai all on the bench, so all those guys can play through the edge. I don't think they will, but definitely can. With how depleted this team is, you do have Braden Hamlin-Ueli and Toby Rudolph on the reserves. Does Cam McInnes become an option, or is it just too unknown? Yeah, it's it's just too unknown. Like I got him earlier on in the season in in fantasy, and then he just scored poorly one time. And it's like, why? Because he just got like hooked for no apparent reason. I don't know. Like, there's there's other players coming into this team. I think at his best, Cam McInnes is always an option. Um, how good he is defensively. But it's not sexy. It's it's nothing really. Britt Nicker is, and I think that he plays expensive. eighty minutes. It's a more expensive Morgan Smithies. Yeah, basically. It's like, a 10 let's, just, more. <laughs> let's just not get Cam McInnes. I think that that's probably just best. Um, yeah, Britt Britt Nicker is the interesting one because I, I love him as a buy. I always love him as a buy. Probably one of the best edge line oh, line runners in the comp, and playing off Nico is amazing. But it's just like the the 
bench is just a little bit pooey. Like if you own him, sweet. But if you are looking at buying him, just give it a week. Um, I don't think his break even's amazing. I will 132. Yeah. So you can definitely just wait the week. Like I'm not paying 710k for a guy with probably not ever going to score 132, even if all things go well. Um, his highest score in the NRL is is, is 132, and that's against the Cowboys, and he's never gone close to that. He's got a 122 against the Knights, but I'm very confident to say that Britton Nicker is not hitting this break even, so you can definitely wait a week on buying him. Um, it's not like a Walsh who's got that potential to, to go huge, so uh, that's the Bunny Sharks. Uh, Tigers taking on the Dragons at Campbelltown, 4 or 5 on Sunday. Alex Seyfarth starting for the injured John Bateman on the edge with the Fano brothers, both injured with uh, Latu with a hamstring and uh, NCO with and, and uh, the Fano. Samuela with, with a HIA. Samuela. I, was, I, was, I don't know why I was going to say Sione, but Samuela <laughs> um, with the HIA uh, protocols. And Justin Matamua is finally in, as with AJ Kapoa, a uh, huge Matamua guy, have been for probably two years. So glad to see him getting a run. Jack Simkin named on the bench. Sh- sure. Um, I'm not sure what that does for Appy because we've been running a utility rather than a nine. Uh, I don't trust him to be playing in the middle too much. So not sure what that means for Appy. Uh, Jack DeBell named on the bench. Harm Sally named a prop. And Tom Eisenhuth starting at lock. And Blake Laurie also named on the bench as well. Uh, mate, I don't care about this game one bit. I'm a Tigers fan, but I just I do not care about this game from a super coach standpoint. Yeah, there was a bit of talk coming that Zach Lomax might be playing fullback, but yeah, hasn't surfaced. That didn't happen. Um, yeah, yeah Sloan's your guy. Yeah. Um, kill. That that game's whatever. Uh, and the last game of the round, the Raiders also taking on the Titans, which is a whatever game, at GAO at 6.15 on a Sunday. Uh, I feel like we got a GAO game on Sunday last week as well, and I didn't care about it then. I don't care about it now. Uh, Chevy Stewart, uh, huge news. Jordan Rapp yeah. out eight weeks with that meniscus injury. Oh, so, so Chevy, Chevy Stewart has like come from the clouds, but absolutely nowhere. Um, center wing fullback, but there's a lot of a lot of going ons here, and um, we'll get to those in a second. Zach Hosking starting as well. Corey Horsburgh out with that abdomen issue. Trey Mooney comes in, uh, and the Titans are whatever. David Fafita starts. Cool, don't care. Um, the Titans. So James Schiller. Obviously, one of the most talked about players this week with a monstrously low break even of minus 117. He walks on the field and makes 110K. Albert Hopperwide is scheduled to be back next week. Now, there's two situations. Stuart, Stuart stays at fullback. Hopperwide comes in and replaces Schiller. And people can sit there and say, oh, but Schiller's played well and the Raiders have won. We said that about Zach Hosky. Yeah, he got dropped as well. <laughs> so um, the other option is Hopperwide moves to fullback and Schiller stays on the wing. Or well, the third option is it just stays as is and Hop Wide plays with um, New South Wales Cup. I, that's probably the least likely option. People are worried about um, people are worried about Schiller's job security, but I think it is worth the trade to go to Schiller this week, and then if it goes tits up, go to go to Stewart next week. I don't know if I can run both of them this week. I don't know if I want to own Chevy Stewart and Ethan. Sorry, Chevy Stewart and James Schiller in the same week. Yeah, I'm not. I'm like you're not bringing in. Chevy this week. Let's just wait. Um, look, dare I say that one of these Raiders are going to score a hundred? Like you don't, you don't just go captain option. But when you're playing, when you're playing the Titans, um, are you saying it's captain it's James sure thing is better than anything. Captain, oh, I just James mean like I was looking at the Raiders. And I was like, who can I captain? Um, but yeah, I don't think there's anyone there. Uh, Adam, yes, but he was also named to the bench when Whitehead returned. Yeah, he started on game day, but Ricky shown the prominence to just take players that he doesn't like, or he has a starting third in his head, and he'll just not budge from that. So uh, when Whitehead came back, Hosking went straight to the bench. Um, but yeah, look, I'm not looking at either. Uh, sorry, I'm I'm looking at shit. I'm not I'm not looking at Stewart. And then next week, man, we can do Chevy Stewart in Kale Eero in next week. Like we can, or actually, you can wait a week on Stewart as well. Like Stuart can yeah, play two more. Two weeks. He can play. We're gonna have potential if the, if everything goes well. I doubt it will, but if everything goes well, we can trade in Schiller this week, Eero uh, next week, Stuart the week after. And if you've got a Talagi, you've got yeah. a Jacob Gagai, you've got a Micah Sevo. They're your great outs that you can move off on. You've got a Zach Labart or you've got a Taylor May. Like these are the guys that you can move off from. So don't 
go early on Stewart or Eero. Uh, I just think there's so many question marks about security. Like with Eero, the Sharks are missing a million middles. So has Craig Fitzgibbon just said, look, we need Talakai in the middle. And then when everyone's back, he can go back to center. Maybe, maybe yep. not. We don't know, but let's just wait and see. With Chevy Stewart, it's like, does he hold the fullback spot when Albert Hopawade comes back? Because there was some talk in the preseason that Hopper could play fullback. Like, I don't think that happens. I think it's Schiller that drops out. But there's just enough doubt in my mind where I'm happy just to just wait. I think Schiller's got a low enough break even if even if he scores 70 points this week, he's going to make you 160K and then you can fuck him off next week and then just keep that money machine rolling. Um but yeah, let's talk about Joe Tarpany because someone out of the two of us is looking at buying him this week. Yeah, I was just looking at him hey. like he's, yeah, I was just looking at him like I need a front row forward. I've still got like your Liam Henrys and your, and your Sam Hughes and uh, Vili Fafita. Um, I am going to, spoiler alert, I might have a million dollars to spend. Um, yeah, so, so in the chat this week, fuckface over here just goes, oh, I've got 600k in the bank. And it went, and Brayno and I just like did you just sell Cleary and Hines and buy Luke Brooks? Like what the fuck have you done? <laughs> no, I've just been letting it letting it marinate, you know. Um look putting it away in finance. Um but yeah, no, I've just been downgrading to these guys that have been rising. Um and like I I, I still want Schiller because I think if you get Schiller for one week, it's still a good trade. Oh, it'll be 150k, and that's that's fine. I know it's, I know we say, oh, it's, it'll cost us two trades, but whatever. It's 150k, just take it. Um, yeah. but yeah, let's move into the actual proper buy, hold, and sells. If we can get the stinger ready. Oh, I haven't yet. Oh, he hasn't got him prepped. Oh, what a fraud. Yeah, here we go. Targets acquired. Obviously, no surprises. James Chiller headlines this list: 238k. Minus 117 break even. We bullied this guy hard in the preseason. He was the butt of all jokes. Bit of James Schiller about him. But fuck me, he's he's actually now our top buy option this week, Matrix. It's come full circle. We are we are living in a simulation. Yeah, I know. Like I he's been joked since 2012 for me. Um, because I got him for that week one and then had to hold him all year. He was the only guy that I held all year, I think. Um, but yeah, look, he's there. He had a fantastic game last week. And yeah, you can't look a gift horse in the mouth. Yeah, exactly. You can lead the horse to water, but you can't make a drink. Uh, minus 117 break even. He makes 110K just by getting named today. So uh, load up. Next one, Crichton. I assume this is not the Stephen variety. This will be the Angus variety. 400, yes. and about tw- 400 about 20K. Um, back starting. Looked really good last week. Like Looked unreal. Uh, back to his best. Concerns over the minutes. Uh, I think he probably plays 60 at the worst. Satili can rotate through the middle, which is really nice. They've also got Zach Docker Clay on the bench, and Brandon Smith is not exactly a 80 minute middle. So I think there's some uh, some good minutes up for grabs for Satili through the middle, which I think opens the door for Angus Crichton. Uh, looks really good. I think it's him and Nat Butcher moving forward, and Satili offers a lot of versatility off the bench as well. Uh, another back rower, Eli Katoa. Well done to the people that picked him up last week. He's always been a guy that. You know, we've loved on this podcast. He offers so much. He's improved dramatically in terms of the negatives. He doesn't give away. Sorry, he doesn't give away as many penalties, doesn't give away as many missed tackles as what he once did, um, but still has that dynamic upside. And playing in a Melbourne Storm team, he was attacking pretty free flowingly at the moment. So uh, Eli Katoa, really, really like him. Yeah, um, you, we were talking about Britton Nicker, and I said he was probably the best line runner. Look, Eli Kato is probably the one that could ride him, rival him. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, but yeah, six ninety K, it's hard. But if you've got money in the bank, then hey, um, get him in. The draw's fantastic. I think that you could like you wouldn't be surprised if for five weeks Eli Kato averaged eighty. Oh, I'll put you on the spot here. Would you rather Eli Katoa or would you rather Hammer Olakawatsu? Um Eli Katoa. Because Hamale is six hundred and ninety seven k, it's a very similar price, averaging seventy four in the season. Uh, and Eli Katoa, I think, is out pipping him slightly because I did the team of the season post yesterday, and I remember him being in there. Uh, he's averaging seventy four, so I think Hamale is just pipping him by a point out of a point. Um, but Melbourne's draw opens up really nicely. Mel- so I, Melbourne's I like draw has been awful, and yeah, Eli's now scoring well. Up. Like, 
Um, yeah. So that's them. Uh, the next is Joey Manu, probably less of a priority. This is more of a short-term play because um, we have no security over Tedesco, uh, but more of a long-term play is these two boys, Callum Ponga, Reese Walsh. Uh, shout out if you sold Callum Ponga in round three. This guy did. Uh, it's worked really amazingly ever since. Uh, disastrous, but you can uh, you can get him back in. Um, yeah, like KP, he's found that form that he had last year. He's making all the sellers look like right mugs. Um, Knights are looking somewhat decent, uh, and he's just involved in everything. He's a guy that just all those marginal 50-50 calls with like line break assists or line breaks or just you know try contributions slash try assists. He always seems to get them. And you can sit there and say, oh, it's bullshit, blah, blah, blah. We know it's bullshit. Nico Hines is the king of bullshit. Like, yeah. we know it happens, so just get on. Like, don't fight it. Um, KP, absolute stud. Back to his absolute best. When you're paying a pretty premium dollar for it, I think he's just a touch under 900K. How crazy is it that he scored 100 in that game? Like, that... Yeah. Honestly, like, I was just sitting there wowed. I... Anyway, I did not expect a loop last week, but hey. Callum yeah, because you because you held through. You were you're the more sensible one out of you, mean and uh, Brainer, but um, you held through, and he's now eight hundred and eighty nine k with a break even of thirty three. So if he tons up again this week. We're looking at what's that nine hundred and sixty k? Yeah, nine hundred and fifty k, like nearly pushing, nearly pushing a mil. Uh, his form in the last couple of weeks has been extraordinary. Fifty forty five to start the season, not great. Then took on Melbourne. Uh, and scored an 86, and then went into to the Warriors and the Dragons and gone 117 and 117. So, uh, yeah, unreal. Taking on the Roosters this week at McDonald Jones again, a Roosters side who somehow considered points to Blake Taff, of all people. So it was worrying signs when Blake Taff is scoring points on UKP. He was playing 11 pe- people, but... Sure. No, not at the start of the game. Oh, yeah, actually. Not Taff scored that scrum play. I was like, fuck it, hell, let's go. <laughs> what is going on here? Uh, and the last one, Reese Walsh, this one... Probably less safe than KP, but just pure vibes. Uh, goal kicking, which is great. Doesn't probably have the upside of KP, but um, in a much better attacking team. Doesn't have a, doesn't have AJ. Well, not AJ. Doesn't have Adam Reynolds, which isn't ideal, but it does give him more points for goal kicking. So Reese Walsh with that 130 break even, but with an absolute golden draw for you guys. I think it opens up really nicely. I think you guys should be going 4-5-0. I'll pull up the draw exactly, but I know yeah. it gets amazing. I had- I had some Dolphins fans telling me how much better they were going than the Broncos because have a look at the ladder at the moment. And I was like, oh, well, have a look nothing, at the teams man. you've played, man. Um, Dolphins this week at Suncorp. Raiders next week at Suncorp. Titans next. Uh, Tigers the week after. The rabbit. Oh, my goodness. Let me try again. Dolphins, Raiders, Tigers, Roosters, Parramatta, Manly, Titans, Sharks. Souths. Goodness. It gets, it's pretty good. Like, there is a world where you can buy Walshy and just hold him through. They have the buy in round 13, which is amazing for Reese Walsh because he was missing yep. round 13 anyway. They have the buy in round 16, which is amazing for Reese Walsh because he was missing round 16 anyway. You only miss one game from Reese Walsh between now and rounds. Now in the season. Sorry, now in round 24. You miss one game of Reese Walsh between now and round 24 that he wasn't scheduled to miss. He could be a, a keeper from now until the end. Yeah. Um. Uh, look, there is concerns. Like he's come back from the eye injury, and um, you know, cops anything there. He um he could be out again, but oh, that's the concern. Reece Welsh gets more involved with a ray with a ray out too. Like, oh, he's everywhere. I like I don't know I don't know what it is, but like the knights looked really clunky in attack, and whenever the knights get inside the twenty, I'm just like sure. But whenever the Broncos get inside the twenty. And Walsh has the ball. I'm like, fuck me. What's going to happen? Like, this is going to kill me. For for KP, does have a tough stretch during the middle and during origin as well. So takes on the Roosters this week. Bulldogs, Dolphins, Warriors, Tigers, Titans, Bulldogs. Nice run there. Takes on the Warriors at uh, McDonald Jones, which is good. Then has the then takes on Melbourne. Then takes on Penrith. Then takes on the Bye, uh, and then Parramatta. So it's a, a, a tougher period there. Then takes on Manly, Broncos, Penrith in a three-week stretch. And then finishes the season with South Titans, Dolphins. I think there's a world where you go Reese Walsh this week over KP and don't trade them until round 24 when you go back to KP. It's going to suck, but I think that's definitely an option. Yeah, look, I don't hate it. Um, 
I won't be going anywhere from from I suppose KP, but Reese Walsh, like you know, even oh, like no, term, I mean, I'm not I'm not sitting here saying sell KP to Walsh. Like I'm more talking, I guess, people in my situation that somehow own Latrell Mitchell, yeah. um, and I'm looking at at Walsh versus KP, and I think Ian Johnson makes a good point. Um, he says here KP has the better floor, um, but KP's got the better ceiling. Walsh is more likely to go for a 15 than than KP is. Yeah, like that's just the, the reality of it. But in saying that, I think Walsh will go on a consistent run of hundreds, uh, and we saw that last year. No, I'm with you. Um, look, you don't you don't have to talk up Broncos players to me. I'm I'm on I'm on, I'm on board, man. I, I've come full circle. I hated the little prick last year because I never owned him, and he just kept being on ten points at seventy minutes and finishing on hundred, and it just fucking made me so depressed. I'm just like I hated him so much, but now I've learned to love him. So. Uh, let's move into the holds. Oh. You've put in the notes here, hold. No one. Swing the axe for everyone. <laughs> you just you just making train changes for the sake of changes? Yeah, 100%. No, I just... Yeah, look, there, there's some guys here that I consider uh holding i just there's also some guys in here that i wasn't considering trading and in our dms you were like oh yeah throw that guy and i was like yeah i was holding him anyway <laughs> but that makes that a good call so um yeah yes. look, i'll um i'll grab a couple there uh burbo um 100 is a hold at the moment and we mentioned earlier that 12 break even um he was probably a sell three weeks ago um but yeah look if you've got him now isn't the time to get him in the centers he's always a chance to score and a try um I don't know if I play him, but you definitely hold him. You're going to, that cash generation is going to start to ramp up. He's going to score more than 12. Absolutely. Uh, Sean Lane, it's icky. It's yucky. We don't love it. But I think that there's just been enough to park. If you have a team that's got no fires, yes, you can sell Sean Lane. That's absolutely fine. Um, He's still averaging 47 on the season and he's been terrible. Um, comes into an okay draw, obviously takes on the Cowboys this week at Combank, probably the best place to play at Combank if you're a Titans. Then takes on the Dolphins, Manly, um, and then a buy in round nine. You could probably look to jump off in round nine. That's what I'm going to be looking at doing because then he takes on the Broncos, Melbourne, and South. Hopefully South have turned the corner by then. Uh, and then, yeah, you can probably just look to sell before that. I think he's shown enough to hold if your team's in dire straits. I am with you there. Uh, Ruben Garrick um, will miss a week. Um, it sucks. Ruben Garrick's great. Whatever. Uh, but, yeah, there's no real reason to to get rid of him this week. Um, you're going to miss players. There's buys throughout the year now. Um, hopefully you've got enough depth to cover. Um, yeah, Ruben Garrick should just roll back and, yeah, be back into it. Also, I think he's a keeper. We, uh, we've, sh- we've shown enough from him to suggest that he's a season keeper. So if you have him, um, I wouldn't be changing him out. Um, then um and terrell may as we've already alluded to before i think his minutes were just a, a combination of the situation uh, i'm not too worried if it if it happens if it keeps happening then we can look at having this conversation but um but if you've got 11 players out on the park where do you start digging out from oh of course like you start you start flooding flooding your edges because you know that's where people are going to attack so you take out middles and just can keep edges on so I, I fully get that like it's if it happens two or three weeks in a row We've obviously got Josh Curran now that we can move up there, um, but I'm not concerned at all. Let's move into the cells, the players we're going to uh, cash in on. Dylan Brown, the yep. most must-have 5-8 five, five weeks ago. The man that you need to be building a team around. He gets you 60 points by walking on the park. He's the best 5-8 by a country mile. It's not even close. He's now at their top priority cell. Yeah. Um, I didn't think I'd ever be saying this after a guy gets injured two weeks later, but I'm glad I went brown to uh, Luke Metcalf uh, <laughs> earlier on in the season. I haven't, um, got much but, right. I haven't got much right, but I'm glad I went brown to Val Holmes last week. Yeah. Look, and like, you know what? There was a joke in the chat that brown is the color of poo. Um, look, honestly, like if Mitchell Moses was out there, I 100% would own Brown. I think you would still own Brown as well. Um, but I don't have, I know we're talking about Lane a hold, but he's also a guy that was 400 K 
Um, they're Around just 700 plus. Yeah, exactly. Like you just don't want stocks in Parramatta players at the moment. Like we were spruiking Gutho as well, and that didn't work out well. Like I just don't. I have no interest in Parramatta players until Mitchell Moses is back. And honestly, I might own all three of these guys: Dillbags, Gutho, and Moses at one stage if Moses can sort them out. So. We then move into the three-headed dragon from the Roosters. Dom Young, still yeah. Zipanua, James Tedesco. Uh, Dom Young, a process of being out for three weeks, and he's going to lose any bit of cash he made on him with the monster break-even. Cecilia Zipanua, a uh, product of just being shit, uh, and James Tedesco yeah. being a product of better players in his position while he's out. Um, Ruben Garrick, uh, there's enough center wing cover. You can get enough points out of cheapies. We saw that with Ethan Strange. Like You can get enough center wing yeah. points out of cheapies. Uh, I don't think it's worth holding to that. Like he he's been great, but he hasn't been like elite to suggest he's he's a fine hold with the indefinites over his absence. I wouldn't sell Teddy unless he just got injured and had that and they had that big history. Like yeah, like if he, if he, if he, let's talk if about he, Luke Geary when he gets a concussion. Like that's four exactly, weeks exactly. I mean, if Teddy came out and dropped a forty last week and he wasn't injured, we're not having this conversation because he yeah. he has those games. Um, and Latrell, um, I suppose you can speak for that, but three weeks off. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yep. I don't know. It's so shit because like, I said this to Braino, like he got 70 last week doing fuck all. And like, that's what Troll does. Like when he's on fucking elite, like super coach wise, absolute freak, but he's just not interested and he's now out. So it's like, whatever I was selling him next week anyway. So it's, he'll be doing fuck all this week, but he won't get you 70. No, no, he will continue to do fuck all, but yes, the the points the points won't come. Um, moving into the watch list this week, we've got a couple. Uh, we've got Kayla Eero, 219K. Obviously, yeah, we're seeing what happens with, with Talakai and, and that rotation and potentially teamless Tuesday next week. Tomato Martin, 363K. I think Tomato Martin is owed an apology by you, Matrix, because I think you were giving him some some real slander last week when I brought up the idea of him potentially being an option. Oh, did I? I yeah, I, think, I thought you said he could be 200k and you still wouldn't buy him. Oh, no, no, 100%. I love tomorrow, Martin. That might have been, that might have been, I don't, I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm just I 100 wouldn't. I, I got tomorrow, Martin, in um, dad's team has tomorrow, Martin in it. So, sorry, um, sorry you, you got him for your dad's team or your dad got him? Just, no, dad got him. <laughs> um, but elite. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I actually think I would, could possibly be looking at him with how poor. Five eights are. I love tomorrow, Martin. Like I think it's a great story. Um, and yeah, just wait and see what happens. Like there was no reason really to get him last week. There's no real reason to get him this week. Um, he's injury prone. Um, we've still got Chanel Harris Tavita, who I actually expected to get that spot. But you know, tomorrow, Martin. Yeah, if he locks this spot down, which he didn't do himself any um, any disservice this week, he was elite. Um, yeah, tomorrow Martin could be a buy, especially five eights a wasteland. So yeah, yeah, we we said that. I mean, go have a look at my weekly posts for the team of the season. Um, you can see in the averages, like if I pull up the averages now, um, five eights is just dead. I think uh, Matt Burton is the is the five eighth one this season. He's only averaging sixty two point eight. Like, one good score. Yeah, like if, if I'm going through the team of the season, it's Edwards with a 90, it's Holmes with a 91, Lomax 82, Hammer 80, uh, 86, Multalo 85, Jerome Hughes 80, Fenor Blake 69, Robson 78. Um, Stefano Tuikamanu was not a name I expected to see in the team of the season, but he's got a 62 yeah. and a half. And then all your back rowers are mid 70s, and like Matt Burton has the, the second lowest in this team with a 62.8. So 5'8's dead, and there's been plenty of questions about. What do you do with 5'8"? If you do sell Brown, like, do you go another 5'8"? And I think you can just run Galvin and Strange. Um, I've yep. highlighted one of those questions that we'll touch on as well. But, um, yeah, grim. And the Broncos bench rotation, with only two forwards, giving them a watch uh, might be a must-have. Obviously, we've got X on the on the bubble. Is he a guy mm. that you're prioritizing this week? Because we didn't talk about him as a, as a buy. But is he still no. a guy that you're picking up? Because he's 285... Sorry, 286, 265K with a break even of minus six. I just think when Payne Haas comes in, I think that he's probably the guy that drops off. Like Kobe Hetherington's been there for a few years. I think X will be a player in the future, but I think it might take, you know, someone like a Corey Jensen or somebody like that moving on in the future for X to like 
lock in a full-time bench spot. I just don't think he's there yet. I also just don't think he has enough upside. Like, if he just pumps out 30s, amazing if you started with him. Sick. But, like, do you want to be trading a guy that's just going to get you 35 points and, like, maybe get you, you know, maybe get you 150K value? Like, probably not. Um, At least with Schiller, you know that he's in and out. Like, he's on an AE risk, whereas Willison could be. Um, If you started with him, amazing. If you are looking at buying him, I probably just wouldn't. And that suggests that he's only been traded in by 510 people so far, which is surprisingly low. More people have traded him out than, sorry, 202 people have traded him out and 510 have traded him in. And that's surprising because I thought, you know, him with the low break even, maybe it's because he didn't play last week and people are just forgetting about him. Um, But yeah, he's definitely one to to consider. Um, Yeah, so let's move into our captaincy calls this week. Are you ready, kids? Just before we do that, Cade Burgess makes a good point. Pierre Cora isn't there. Um, I'm not too sure if that's going to affect X too much because I think Jaden Hunt just drops out completely. Um, but Payne Haas coming back is the real one that's going to potentially um, throw some spanners in the works if Kevy decides to keep running this smoothies and sailor rotation. If, if Smoothie and Sailor are still on the bench when Payne Haas comes in, I'm buying him day one. <laughs> He'll play fucking 75 minutes and just... Because he has yeah. to. Yes, um, 100%. Let's move into captaincies. Obviously, Ponga on Thursday night against a pretty depleted Roosters. I don't know if he's the best fullback option this week. That could be a hot take, and we'll, we'll talk about the next one. But you're the Ponga owner out of the two of us. Is he getting some kind of captaincy tag this week? Yeah, he is for me. Um, especially not having uh, a couple of the other fullbacks that we're going to be chatting about a bit later on. Um I have the I have turbo as well. Um, so yeah, I suppose there's some really juicy matchups for some other fullbacks. And Ponga, if you can score 117 in that last game, honestly, like you you get an armband every week from me. Roosters fire up, turn around, uh, shut down performance this week, maybe. Oh, you reckon they're just they're just done? No, I don't think they're just done. I like Manu at fullback. I also think that that could be a vice captain option. Like mm-hmm. I definitely wouldn't like captain Amanu, I don't think. Uh, but yeah, look, a vice captain option um, in that game as well. But Knight's defense was pretty good again on the weekend. They've been pretty good all year. Well, for me, because I'm not going to be able to field a full team this week, I get a free loop and I need to, obviously being men short, I need to chase the biggest upside. And for me, I think that is in the Friday night, six o'clock game. Ryan Pappenhausen taking on the Bulldogs. No goal kicking for Pat, which, you know, probably limits him by 20 points. But I think Pat could put up 150 in this game. Like, he's looked really good coming back from injury. This dog side is absolutely shot to bits. Um, They had a huge effort last week and then faded out in the second half. I think Melbourne could be really clinical and just put the sword through them. So, Pappenhausen is a guy that I'm definitely looking at VCing. I think he could be the top option this week, which maybe is is a hot take. Um... But moving into the next game, we're blessed with fullback choices this week because Walsh yeah. back goal kicking, taking on the Dolphins who are sitting in first place, which is a very, very weird sight to look at, but not putting too much stock in the ladder this early in the season. Uh, I really like Walsh this week as well. Yeah, 100%. Like, um, come back, like, you know, he's still physically fit. He um, His eye was sore um, to, to dumb that down. But look, realistically... Um, Dolphins have been playing good footy, um, but they just score a lot of points and let in a lot of points as well. Uh, Broncos will be a bit more of a grind, but I expect the – look, Dolphins have some big outs too. I expect the Broncos to win in a clinical performance, to be honest. Ian Johnson wants to know, are we not worried with Hughes and Munster taking Pappenhausen's points? Uh, Matt, Pappenhausen averages way, way more with Munster in the side than he does without him. And I'm talking like – 40, 40 points, something like that. It's something ridiculous. Yeah. I, I did the stats the other day. I don't have them on hand, but it's ridiculous, the the difference that Munster provides Pappenhausen. Yeah, it didn't work last week, but whatever, it happens. Um, moving into the, the the another fullback matchup, you've obviously got um, Pom Trevojevic. I'm probably less confident. Like Out of these first four, if I had to rank them, I'd probably rank them Pap 1, Ponga 2, Walsh 3, Turbo 4. I'm yeah. not really looking at Turbo as a captaincy option this week, but Yep, still, still a great. Point. And I can't because I'm going to have one of those other fullbacks. Of I think well, anyway, most I think of the guys listening are going to have, yeah, 
two of those four fullbacks, really. So I said he's fourth. That's fourth at the time because then we move into a Parramatta side who was fucking miserable against Scott Drink Quarter, who is, I think, could go huge. Just like we've got so, so many good fullback options this week for captaincy. Yeah, it's a shame that you can only captain one. How many times throughout the year would I love to VC and C both the captain, especially when halfback wasn't firing earlier on? Like, yeah. So I know that you're not into your fantasy soccer, but. Whenever they run like the fantasy Euros or the fantasy like World Cup, like you can change your captaincy every game until you get one that sticks. Could you imagine that oh, for really? Supercoach? You just captain fucking KP. Oh shit, he didn't go good. We're captain uh, Happy, <laughs> and she's like, you're building the team to just absolutely cap out. Like it's ridiculous. Um, and then another fullback juggernaut, Will Kennedy, taking on the bunny. <laughs> no, you got yeah, Nico yeah. Hines taking That's on the bunny. That's you've ever seen. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Nico Hines taking on the bunnies, 735 at a core. Is he off the back of that 96 against the Raiders? Do you have enough um, faith in the captain him? Because obviously all of our VC slots are taken up by a fullback. We've got no Nathan Cleary this week and no real standout captaincy option. Well, I don't own him anymore. That's the thing. Oh, so, what the fuck. Sorry. Yeah, what? So, so last week happen? I went... I didn't know um, about this. So last week I went Nico to uh, to SJ when I Whoa, that that worked out well, and then like instead of keeping because I was going to go Metcalf to Val. Hang on, did you hold? Then, did you hold Heinz for his ninety six? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh fuck! You got kiss of a dick. So you held him for his ninety six and then traded him to SJ's hundred and twelve. Yes, fuck you. And <laughs> and then kept Luke Metcalf because I was going to get an AE regardless. So then I've kept Luke Metcalf and instead of okay. moving Ethan Stranger <laughs> and got, yeah, SJ instead of Val because I was going to captain Val. And I'm like, I'm not spending 800K for a center that I'm not going to captain. So, I, I, bought him, I bought him to captain. So I, I justified, I was like, oh, I don't like this, but I'm I'm buying him to captain. So it made, made it a little bit easier stomach. So yeah, no, SJ this week. I will get Nico back. Um, just so SJ's you, draw is pretty good for the next couple of weeks. What are you doing so. for captaincy then? Because I, I doubt you're captaining anyone from the Tigers or Dragons or the Raiders and the Titans, unless you're looking at a, a potential James Schiller captain. I doubt it, but I've seen it you do some weird be, shit. <laughs> yeah, and it usually pays off. Um, <laughs> it could be SJ against Manly, to be honest. Um, look, SJ's good. He's goal kicking. He seems to have that floor. Um, Honestly, let's just go Ponga into SJ and um, and see what happens. I did toy with Ronnie Mulatalo a little bit, but that's a bit too spicy for me, I think. All right. This is going to be a test because Ryan Hammond, super chat, tight ass, and he gave us $2. What a, what a fraud. Makes so much money off, off you. Uh, he only gave us $2 back. What a, what a fraud. He, he has 880 k to spend. He wants a pod that's not a fullback. That's hard because I'm just going through all of the best players and they're all fullbacks or center wings. Um, Eli Katoa? Yeah, I was thinking Eli Katoa as well. Or like Isaac Tungo, if you can wait. Yeah. Maybe yeah, yeah. Tungo. You don't have to you don't have to get it this week, but Tungo's been great all year. Um, any love like any love for Hopgood? Seven hundred and thirty one K averaging seventy two on the season? No. No? All right. No, I just think it's meat and potatoes, which I would take at the moment. Yeah. No, I just I just don't. Uh, sorry. Uh, and obviously everyone in the chat's getting involved. Uh, Matt with the Hudson Young suggestion. I'm sure you can get behind that. on the weekend, can I say? I was, <laughs> that's I was his, that's cheering one game on. Out of every, one game out of every six that he decides to do something. <laughs> I was cheering on. The Broad Beach Tavern was going off, I tell you. That, were, they, were they forever young? Yeah, they were forever young. I'll tell you what, I sung more than that on that night. Whew, big day. Footy. Oh, we got there at one o'clock and the Formula One started at two. And yeah, we just parked up all night, all day until about nine o'clock at night. Uh, you you get, saw my you comments? Know, I, did, I, I did. You, you were getting ready for a Daniel Ricciardo masterclass that didn't uh, materialize. <laughs> yeah, I was actually on for him for the points. So that was I good. saw you had, you had a wager on, didn't work out. Um, but to sum it up, looks like this week is the week of the fullback in terms of VCing. Uh, whichever fullback you have, VC them. Uh, and then if you have Nico Hines, he's probably the standout C. But if you don't, you can go a little bit rogue. Um, but hopefully one of your VCs deliver and you can take the loop. Uh, 
moving, there's no, uh, I'm sorry, Ian Johnson, uh, you're going to be upset. There's no insight games tonight because it's just the two of us. Um, uh, and, uh, Breno, Breno was a late pullout. Um, he was a, he was a late withdrawal from, from the squad. So, uh, moving into our bet for the week and we have, we went well last week. We, I don't think we got anything. Check this Here out. comes the money. Here we go. Money talk. Here comes the money. I've blown my load too early. I forgot we had a stinger. Um, last week was a disaster. I um, I don't think we, we got a leg up. I'll have to quickly go into the uh, to the pending and, and see how we went. We didn't get a single leg up. We had the Roosters minus 10.5. They didn't even win. We had the Panthers minus 3.5. They didn't even win. And then we had Parramatta head-to-head. And that went well. They didn't even win. So, <laughs> great. Oh, we are shocking. So, we're, we're round six now. So, we've had six bets. We are down sixty dollars on the season, um, and so moving into our bet this week, we have put on. Goodness me, if I can find it, it's on my. Is it for your double from IJ in the chat? So, oh, well, that will help our bet uh, because IJ, we've picked Corey Oates anytime try scorer, we've picked the Knights head to head, the Warriors head to head, and the Raiders head to head for a whopping return. Ten dollars will win us sixty five dollars and eighty eight cents. I think that will. We'll be if this if this wins, we'll be down five bucks on the year. So yeah, let's pray pray that it gets up. I'm pretty confident in the Corey Oates anytime to be. I was like, I don't think I don't really rate Bostack as a defender. I know Corey Oates has been practicing at second row, but yeah, no, we're a chance. Let's uh let's finish up the stream a lot a uh, lot quicker tonight. No two hour marathon with just you and I. Breno is the one that drags it down, obviously by the looks of it. Let's move into question time. It's question time. Let's answer your questions for the week ahead. You answer and the first question, one. Of course, of course, of course. Uh, question time is brought to you by. Oh my goodness, he's left me, so I'm gonna have to uh, try and. Ah, oh, there we go. I can pull it up myself. Question time this week is brought to you by Insight Unlimited. Insight Unlimited gives you exclusive access to the team at Insight Fantasy Sports, where you get access to all our thoughts, our final teams, trade thoughts, captains, exclusive member Q&As every round, late mail, injury news, and much more. And this isn't just NRL. It's for AFL, NBL, and BBL as well. And NBA, obviously, with playoffs starting very, very soon uh, for all your fantasy NBA comps as well. Only cost twenty five dollars for the whole entire year to join, but also if you don't have twenty five dollars to spend, there is a totally free Discord in the description. Uh, we have a lot of great experts in there. Uh, probably not myself, but I'm going to write in AFL. So feel free to jump in the unlimited and ask me some AFL questions or ask Mick, who is floating around in the chat as well. Questions this week. I've started a few of them, so let's scroll back to the top because we've got a few to get through. Uh, and Matrix has left me at the most crucial time while I'm setting this up. Uh, for you guys that don't produce or podcast, I had a very different setup to the way that these guys do it, so I'm finding it. All right, Raymond Crane, are we thinking Hammer going? Are we thinking Hammer going to cover his break even of 52 or punt now to a keeper? Now I'm not a Hamiso guy. He's left me with huge egg on my face every week because I'm just never a guy that loves these low floor players. But I'm considering Reese Walsh this week, so maybe I'm changing my tune do i think hamiso is a top four center wing by the end of the season and i probably don't i probably have val garrick i'm just trying to think let, let me pull up the the rankings Ronnie Mulatalo probably outscores him too Mulatalo probably end, ends up getting there he always seems to um so we've got val ronnie manu Maybe is Manu going to outscore him? Who knows? But I yeah. definitely, I definitely think if Zach Lomax keeps up his form, like he's a guy that's basing fifty points week in week out with the goal kicking, uh, I really like him as well. So I would like to sell high on on Hamiso if it's not this week, definitely next week with a break even of fifty two. Uh, if he hits it, then probably the time to jump off is next week because then he'll have two low scores in his system. A fifty eight last week with a try is always the concern with Hamiso. Yep. As a hammer owner, yeah, not this week. It's next week. Um, but I do think he still covers it against the Broncos this week. Yeah, so I, I think if you're not selling this week, I think definitely next week is the, the point to jump off. Um, Adam S., Pierre Cora or Tay May? I'm um, assuming that's Taylor. Uh, via Jewel to upgrade to RF. Dylan Brown, also an option, but think he's a better player besides Arcee. Um, oh, surely if you've held Pierre Cora this long, you just ride it out, don't you? 
I think it's May. I think it's no. Honestly, no. I th- I would trade out deal bags out of those guys. I'm holding. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. It's deal bags out. I'm look. I'm probably gonna look like a like an absolute uh, idiot um, when Taylor May averages thirty seven past a turn. Like, there's no way Tungo can just dominate when we know how good um, Taylor May's production is and his performance. So he's also got that neck tat. Did you see that? I was thinking of getting Whisperer across my that. neck. Do, do you reckon that would? Do you reckon if I get Whisperer across my neck, it would work? Do you no, look like a big fuck with already do? You'd have to go. You'd have to go there to there because it's a it's a long. I'd have to start it like behind because Whisper is a lot bigger than May. I'd have to like start it behind my neck and like get it to run down. Oh man, what a tattoo! Absolute. Oh, that's, look, that's the you're Alzheimer's. kidding me! I just got it. Like I saw him getting May there. I was like, fuck, man, it's April. <laughs> he forgot the count on the mark. Do you reckon he forgets his name? Or do you reckon he's a big yeah. Yams fan? Did you see the reverse? It it just says Yam. So when he takes a selfie, he's going to say, yeah. <laughs> oh, what a hero. Um, Richard, Richard Wang asks, Nikara, a pod play. He's back. Good draw. But Burns and Talakai on the bench. Does he play 80? This was our concern, Richard. Um, his break even's also sky high. Like, I think he's worth it. I think he's a top four, five, two RF by the end of the season. But it's like, he can just wait a week. I know it's a great matchup against South, but I, I feel like this can just wait a week. I think, like, if there's a world where you have Eli Katoa and you also are looking to get in Nikara, then great. But I just think Eli Katoa is, like, Nikara with a lower break even. So And a better team? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's fair. I'm just replying to some Twitter DMs. Um Ante, Ante, I don't know. I'm so sorry. Uh, big trade, question mark. All right. Latrell to Ponga or Lusick to Grant? Tossing up which one? Well, one of them's going to play and one of them isn't. And one of them's 700K and the other one's not. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Tra- trade out there Trell. To- Tra- Trell to Ponga is just like one of the most slam dunk moves. Uh, in saying that, I'm probably not going to make it myself. I'm just going to go Walsh for the... For, for the for the vibes, vibes. Uh, Jonathan Davis, new super coach player. Why is Curran's duel so good? Is he a must have? I feel my front row slash two RF is solid and don't feel like I need him, but worried that I'm not understanding something. Cheers, boys. All right, Jonathan, welcome to super coach. You're no, no doubt doing much better than me, but uh, historically, front row forward has been a very shit position. Um, it's a position that doesn't have much upside, that's why we've always gone cheap. Um, in the position current getting to RF jewel allows for a high upside player to play in a low upside position. I would not say he's a must have. I, this is great news. If you are an owner, I would not be running out of my way to buy him though. If that makes any sense. Do you have anything else to add Maddie? Yeah. So I currently don't have Curran. I was hoping that he would, they would stick to their guns and oh, he would just be a disgrace. I own him. Second. So I'm happy. Yeah. It's just a disgrace. Yeah, um, second row forward. Well, I just looked at it and I was like, look, I would get this guy if he's front row forward, but he's not, and the criteria doesn't meet, and no, I don't it, think it's... that he's going to get it. Look, he gets it. Um, I've got a little bit of egg on my face. I was looking through front row forwards earlier, and that's why Whisperer was making a bit of fun of me, uh, mentioning Joseph Tarpany. But I'm like, who else do you get? Like, at least Joey Taps or – like. Joey Taps, Stefano, or Josh Curran are probably. Oh, you just feel so dirty buying them. Stefano. Like, like imagine just waking up on a Wednesday and being like, or like you're sitting down to watch the footy with your missus on a on a Thursday, and you go, oh, I traded in, have me, I, I traded in Stefano. Like, you never feel sexy trading in <laughs> Stefano. No, not a, not a chance. But right now, I'm playing uh, Sam Hughes this week, so something needs to change. So. Uh, Adam S, do you guys actively play head to heads or just overall and let it sort itself out? Changing styles for overall the last two years. I'm back to head to head mode for leagues this year. Um, yeah, I'm not probably the person to ask because, like, any year that I've had success, so like I've got five top 1k finishes, if you believe it or not, to, after this after this year. Um, my head to heads have always just sorted themselves out. Like, if I score well, I win my head to heads. There's some weeks where I don't because people just have pod teams that go well, whatever. But like I've always been like in the content space or the podcasting space, or whatever the fuck you call us, like people use rank as currency and like they use it to determine how good you are at the game or whatever. So like it's just the nature of what we do 
that we have to play for overall um, because for some reason telling someone that you came 700th is good despite you coming 700th and you've won the same prize money as someone that's come 50k like yeah makes no sense to me but it's just the nature of us but i've always been a guy that lets overall take care of itself maddie like i've never understood the and maybe you can shed some better light than me but i've never understood the oh i play head-to-head so i need this player over this player no yeah i don't understand that either i think like when it comes to round 24 and i'm 10,000th and i'm in a league where you can win two grand Oh, um, then, that's, yeah, when then I, start, that's, that's when I start to go head to head because I'm not going to win anything anyway. But I think quite often making the best decisions for overall will win you head to head games. And like, honestly, like I scored 1100, which I considered a good score. Um, and I lost four head to head matchups this week. So, you, oh, it's you win like, some, you lose more. I know no one cares, but I had a top 2% score this week in AFL and I lost one of my head-to-heads. So it's just like, Mm. it happens. But also in head-to-head, you don't need to do well. Like you just can scrape into the top eight and then you make finals and then you can go really rogue from there. So like Maddie said, like there's a reason why all of your favorite podcasters probably recommend the same players and because they're good options and they will help your score increase. And to win your head-to-heads, you need to have a good score. So that's the way that we look at it. Um, Manda Dillon, what a, what a name. Um, is Manu a buy? How well does he score at fullback? Uh, he scores amazing at fullback. He is probably the best super coach. If Manu played a full season at fullback, he finishes as the best fullback in the, in the game. Yep. I don't yeah, think it's close. Yeah, and he's elite. Um, the worry is that this is just a one-week play this week. Yeah. Um, I want Manu. I want Manu so bad. So do I, but I don't want him for one week. That's the only concern that I've got. Um, but if we knew he was playing long-term, like I'd slam dunk by him. Uh, I got a bit lazy and stopped starring questions. I've already answered this one, Ian. Agent Cheats. If Manu isn't a keeper besides Val, who else could we grab around that price for, say, two weeks? Not around that price. It's very boring. But, like, Dylan Lucas could be just, like, a safe 60. Like, he's he's much cheaper. Yeah. He's, like, 500K. You can do so much more with the extra money. Um, Dylan Lucas could be, like, a, a much cheaper alternative. I don't hate Jack Whiten. I know that I said that last week and like Brian, I wasn't impressed, but I don't hate Jack Whiten. Um, he's averaging 67 across three games. He could be a great option as well. Like I'll tell you what, Nick Meany has been like low key averaging mid sixties and he's a touch on the 700 K. If we think the storm are going to slaughter these teams coming up, then he's going to get a lot of goal kicking points. Like he scored 69 last week with no tries. I don't, I don't know. I look at Santa Wing and like, I'm like Val, Manu. I feel Why like I've flogged a dead horse in Hammer. I've got Rooney Mol- Molotalo, but he wouldn't be a buy now. Like, I think it's like, use your jewels and get an Eli Katoa. I'm talking myself yeah. into Eli Katoa all day. Yeah. Or or if, you, if you're not an Eli Katoa guy, Hamole. Um, if you're not yeah. a Hamole guy, a Britain Nicara. If you're not a Britain Nicara guy then what are you? <laughs> like you, you then you're not a fan of rugby league. Find a guy that you like. Like these two RFs, these elite two RFs have 50-point base power and 60-point upsides in attack. So, yeah, I think if it's not Lomax, Manu, Garrick, Val, then don't spend up in that. Or I, I'll chuck Meany in there because I think Meany's been low-key good. Yeah. Um, don't spend up. If you want to send a wing drop down to Dylan Lucas or get an elite to RF, I think that's just our, our point of view because they just have so much security, but also so much upside, especially in these good teams, these good attacking teams. Uh, Adam, gut feel going early off boss talk to Cobo. Hasn't scored a try yet. And Walsh returning with a plum draw thoughts. Fucking love this. Love a guy that goes a gut feel. I hate people that sit on the fence. I hate podcasts that sit on the fence. I fucking love this. It might not work. Can I give you my opinion? Might not work, but fuck, I love the idea of it. As someone that sat there at most of, at every home game this year, I know it's only round five. Selwyn Cobo has not showed me anything at center that instigates that he is a buy right now. I am. I have him in nearly every draft comp at the moment. Um, like honestly, we could see him at five hundred k. He's like. Could Tony Staggs from those other wee, wee years, like centers just regardless of how good they are, 
just don't score well for the Broncos. Um, I don't know. Look, like, you've had a rancid draw. You've had the Roosters in Las Vegas when they were good. You had South at Suncorp when they were good. For that one week. You, yeah, for, for one week. Sorry. And then you had South when they were good. You had the Panthers at Blue Bet. You had the Cowboys at 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 um at Suncorp. And that was just a shit show game. Like, that was just a fucking, just a, a yep. wet piss fest. And then you had Melbourne at Amy Park. He's average 56. Like, if that's a if that's a rancid draw, and then he takes on, like, what is probably the best seven-week stretch of the comp, the Dolphins, the Raiders, the Tigers, a bum fuck Roosters, the Parramatta Eels and Manly, and then the Titans. Like, you're buying him at a 56, and he's scoring a 55 and a half. I don't see any downside for this move. I see only upside. Except for Bostock could keep rising in cash. Oh, and yeah, I don't Cobo love trading. Keep, I don't love trading at Bostock. I don't think Cobo yeah. is dropping cash. I mean, he's he's priced at a fifty six. He's break even the one hundred two this week, which is not great. You get past that, then I think he bottoms out. Like, I like Cobo as a buy because I just I like people that go with a gut feel. Is he my cup of tea? Probably not, but I see the reason behind it. And if it's a gut feel, like, I'm not going to talk you out of something that you feel like. I I, I love the confidence of of putting that out there because so many people will sit there. It's like that. What do they say? Like, there's no no question. No no question is stupid. Like when you're trying to learn something, and yeah. like people like Adam that put out these trade thoughts in a public space that are rogue. I really respect it. So, um, brother, go for it. And if Cobo goes off for 130, then fucking, I want you to gloat so hard, my man. But I don't know if I like selling Bostock because I think he's got good cash. Ange, Lusick worth trading to Grant this week or Brayley neck this week? Yeah, <sighs> yeah, yeah. But it's like Brayley. His minutes will increase week on week. I don't know if now is the time to buy him. I'd love for Brad Arthur to be stupid and just keep picking Lusick for another three weeks. And then we can just jump on Brayley once he's got more match fitness. Yeah, I agree. I'm presuming he means Jaden. Um, not. Yeah, no, yeah. Blake. This is Jalen, not Brad. No, it's the Knights Brayley, the cheaper Brayley. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I don't actually hate the old uh, the Blake either. But. <laughs> No, he was my guy in the preseason. He just he's done nothing. Yeah, but I mean, he's five hundred and seventy-seven k, and he's priced at that. When Hook is a wasteland, like, can you just, yeah, can you just bank it? And that's what I'm looking to do with front row forward. I just want somebody at value that's not going to lose money, that's not going to make money. Um, but yeah, look, I don't think this week's the week to trade trade Lusick. Um, oh, if if you can get to Brent, if you can get to Grant in one move, then you do that. Yeah. Like yeah, obviously, if you have if you have the money in the bank, get him. But like, you're not ripping your team apart to go to Lusick to Grant at the moment. No, but it's a 300k price difference. If you've got that in the bank, then by all means, please please do that because Lusick yep. sucks. Um, um, alrighty. I I got lazy and stopped starring questions for for a little bit. Uh, Peter Ford or Crichton? Jackson Ford's been really fucking weird. <laughs> like. It's like just, just quite. He's got attacking turns in every game, whether it be a try assist or whether it be a line break or a try. He's averaging seventy five point six. You're paying seven hundred k for him. I don't know. Maybe it's just the stigma, but like, I don't think I could live with myself if I paid seven hundred k for Jackson Ford. Yeah, no, I can't do it. But kudos to you. Like, if you're like this massive Warriors fan that just, even when he scored the other night, I just like looked at the TV and I was just like, you're fucking kidding me. Yeah, he's not really a guy. Like, you know how, like, when a player score, like, if a Reese Walsh scores, like, the, the stadium erupts, or, like, you know, yeah. RTS puts on, like, a jink and he, he crashes over the, the whole stadium erupts. Like, if you put Jackson Ford through a hole, you may get, like, Jackson Ford and his family cheering, and everyone's like, yeah, cool. People are more happy that their team is winning rather than Jackson Ford's yeah. score. But in saying that, he's gone uh, 57, 66, 69, 104, 82. So he's only had two scores above his average. Uh, which is not a concern because like averages at this point of the season don't really mean a whole lot. We see Matt Burton is the leading five eighth and he's had one good score. Break even at 23, paying 700K. Do you think Jackson Ford is a keeper by the end of the season? That's the question that you probably need to ask yourself. Um, and if you don't, then I'd probably just give it a miss. Whereas Critter could make you, oh, I don't know why I'm saying Critter. Crichton could make you 120K. 620k you can cap out at yep right, that's more that's than that that's 200k, 200K. Yeah. yeah so he can, he can make 200k i think 
No, write it. Um, what do we got? With what Traded questions? Bailey Hughes. Traded Turbo to Gutho. Gutho drops his worst performance and score in five seasons. Yeah. Would I be stupid to sell Gutho under one week? Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I think so. It's shit. It's shit. It's fucking. But you got to laugh, though. Like, Bailey, you just got to be like, you have to laugh at it because you're like, oh, whatever. Um, but yeah, I don't think trading at Gutho is is the correct answer. Um, to to solve that, that, that feels like a pure rage trade, and I can speak firsthand about rage trades this season. So, uh, I'd be giving um giving that one just a miss and, and holding on to Gutho because, as you said, it's his worst score in five years. Uh, Cade, who do you get in five eight then? If you're not if you are trading at Dylan Brown, this was back when we were talking about Brown as a sell. I think it's fine to just run Strange and Galvin. Like, it's not great, but yep. no one else really stands out to me. And you and I did the um, the, the Discord Q&A like two weeks ago, and we had like a big section on five-eighths and how there's just no yeah. one. Yeah, and we were looking at like Tom Dearden's, which doesn't excite me, even which though he's like, averaging 60 at the moment. Just dropped, like, dropped, dropped 20 on the weekend as well. Like, there's no stability. Yeah. Let's just get a center wing and move Ethan Strange up. Ethan Strange's value at the start of the year was a 5'8 playing in the centers, and now it's, it's a center a playing. playing as a yeah, yeah, it's just a 5'8, just like 5'8 cheapy. Basically, that's it. But, like, I would play Lachlan Galvin this week if he was available. Like, I don't have an issue with Galvin and Strange and, like, and that, honestly, it's going to be running cheap and, like, a Tamari Martin going okay and getting off a Taylor May or a Talagi or someone next week, maybe if I go anyone. Uh, Ian Johnson, I'm just going to leave this one for you. No. Corey Oates <laughs> is not a buy. Um, Corey Oates, Corey Oates is, has a high break even or will have a high break even. So um, still, but four weeks of Corey Oates. Yeah, let's just reminisce. It's great. Uh, Junior wants to know, would you go Manu or Eli Katoa this week? Fuck. That's your that's that's your two boys. You got this is my favorite child. This is the decision that I'm making. So I come into the podcast with Joey Manu coming in, and I think I'm leaving the podcast with Eli Katoa. So um, yeah, flip a coin. <laughs> it's yeah, like that's the thing. Like the reason why I put that to Matrix is for me, I'd probably go Eli Katoa, um, just because of the long term job security and Manu's not getting dropped, but we know that Katoa's lining up at at edge every week and Manu is who knows what he's doing so um yeah it's just it's tough what I'm thinking is if if it comes out that Tedesco is going to miss four weeks or something then I have like hammers and Ronnie Molotalos and blokes like that that I can go to Manu next week yes I forego a good score this week but Eli Katoa could also get a fantastic score this week. And I think he's going to do it at a consistent level. Sweet. Well, that's everything. Uh, we had, I lost the comment, Mr. Calio. I mean, unlimited and it's great. That's, that's the biggest uh, endorsement you can get. I went to, I went to university for four years to study marketing. And I can tell you my, my degree could have been summed up uh, with just this single tweet. Uh, from uh, Mr. Calio. But that is going to be the end of the round six preview. Uh, we'll be back on Sunday. Oh, we're not done. Oh, we are done. Uh, yeah, we are. Adam just says, cheers, guys. Thanks for an in-depth reply. Oh, mate, for thank shout. you so much for the super chat. But that's going to be the end of the round six uh, re- uh, preview. Um, we'll be back on Sunday. Uh, I don't know if I'll be back. Uh, I might have retired a second time by then based off uh, the way that my team is shaking up. I'm in fucking deep shit. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, look, I'll at least be around Sunday. Um, I can't Hopefully drop 60,000 spots in a day. Braino is um, is very much under the weather this week, so hopefully he and his fam uh, are feeling much better and we can get him back on the pod. But, uh, mate, whether I score 600 or 1,600, I'll be here. Um, <laughs> hopefully, touch wood. <laughs> nah, you've listened to an Insight Fantasy Sports podcast. Cheerio. <laughs>